um, talk a little bit about remote scripts today, this beautiful Wednesday, Tuesday morning. Um, because when I'm always when I'm working in Ableton, um, I've got some MIDI controllers, and I want to MIDI learn MIDI learn stuff, and then there are certain things that I cannot MIDI learn. Um, so if we go into MIDI learn mode by pressing a Command M, we can uh, see what we can MIDI learn. Uh, for example, what we can do is um, click on these slots, and then we can assign assign keys to them. And then when we press those keys on the keyboard, we go to those slots. Well, um, you can imagine that if you have a lot of clips in here, that that's not going to work because then you need like you need a lot of keyboards. Um, plus, it's going to be very hard to manage that. So uh, what I wanted to do is to navigate like this in there and um, now I'm pressing the arrow keys on my keyboard by the way and there are multiple ways of doing this actually there are quite a lot of ways of doing this I'm gonna disable this right now um, and the first and easiest I think is to get a control surface a MIDI controller that is just made to do this, like an APC or um, a launch pad or anything like that, that will work instantly. The second option, um, which I also like, is done through Boom MIDI Translator. And it's this software right here. And right now I've got it hooked up to my, um, to my keyboard. And what I can do here is I can learn a new translator and then I'll say I capture MIDI and then I press a button and then we can send then we can see all these values that my MIDI keyboard is sending um, and we can see it in a code which is a hexadecimal code and um, we can see that we have Amstertouch on a channel 14 selected on um, a note D, D sharp 3 uh, with a value of 5 well, I don't want that, so I'm going to scroll all the way to the beginning and say 9D, which is a note on message. And it's on channel 14, and has a velocity of 8. And I want it to accept all velocities, so I'm going to set the variable PP. So now it has um, a velocity, it doesn't matter which velocity I hit it. So that's the first step, now we have, now we have um, set the, the button that we want to use. And then we can skip this rule section and go to the outgoing section. And here we can say what we want to do with that um, with that button. So we can um, say press this key, the right arrow, All right. And then I'm gonna save this. And then now when I press a key on my MIDI keyboard, it will go to the right. And this way. I've made buttons that can go left, right. Um, there's one button that allows me to go to the other window um, to open the device view, I think. There. Um, so this works, and it, it's a bit it's a bit difficult, but um, it works. You have to get used to the system, and um, it's you can make it as as complicated as you want. For example, it can be a little bit more complicated for um, for key combinations, and um, once you get into into rules, which is sort of a code that um, um, that that allows you to do additional stuff to the incoming MIDI, so you can, for example, filter messages out or do multiple things. So this this is a very advanced program, and it works great. Um, that's the second option. The third option, I think, uh, which is the option I prefer most, is control remote scripts. And if we enable it, if we go to preferences and we go to control surface, we can see this whole list here of supported uh, control surfaces. Um, this list, where does he get this list from? Well, if we go to applications on a Mac, I think uh, Windows it will be program files. I'm a bit rusty on my on my windows. Um, then we can say show package contents, and then we go to contents, and then we go to I think app resources, and then media remote scripts. And here we can see the same list. So 
these are all the um, remote scripts, all the control services that um, are supported by Ableton. And we can click on one, and then we get these Python files. And um, Python files are um, pretty difficult to read. Um, this one doesn't open. Let's open it in a text editor. But basically, what these files are saying is, um, it's it's just sort of like a, a controller for Ableton. It's it's rules for Ableton. So Ableton reads this file, and he knows what to link with what. So um, he knows, for example, that if I have my mod wheel, um, what that should do, because the text file is is telling him what that mod wheel should do. Um, so it would look uh, a little bit like this. We have the encoders, transport controls, stuff like that. But you can see that it's not decoded the file very well. Um, it's giving me some weird stuff right there. Luckily, a lot of people have uh, been working with this and there are a few a few works, workarounds to work with this files with these remote scripts. The most easiest option is provided by Ableton itself. Um, we can find that by going to the library and then I think the preferences um, we need to go to the user library I think and then we go to preferences and I think if you're relatively new to Ableton or if you if you want it to work well but you don't feel like you want to do a lot of coding and all that stuff, um, you don't want to spend your time on that, then I think this option is going to be the most valuable. Because if we go to the preferences, Ableton, and then just live, we see user remote scripts. And this is actually something that Ableton has provided. Um, it has two text files. It has an instant map text, how to, which is just a manual on how to use this system. We can skip that for now. And then we have a user configuration text. And this might look a little bit complicated, but it's actually very easy. Um, here we can see all the things that Ableton can do, like the vol volume sliders, the bank buttons, the encoders, which is our own, uh, the device racks, uh, with the track arm buttons. And everything that has a zero behind it can be controlled by, or sorry, uh, um, a minus one, can be controlled by your control unit. Um, um, the way you do that is you watch um, what MIDI message your button is sending and to do that you can choose for example a MIDI monitor and then um, the MIDI monitor is listening to my keyboard and then when I press a note we can see um, which note it's sending and that is the one you want to use here for so for a pad one note then um, we would choose that that same channel I think I have this set to I need to set this to decimal numbers and press the key again and then we can see the channel which is still 14 and we have the 76 here and this is the number so if we want pad one note to be 76 we just say that and then um, we set the channel right here and we set the name right here but everything is ex explained very well in the in the file I think I'm making it more confusing than it actually is and once you've done that you can save the file and you can go to preferences and then here on the control services you'll see the name of that of that file that you made for example I made the key lab uh, 61 file and now you never have to MIDI learn anything because it just listens to this file. So then when I go to my MIDI learn mode, um, I can delete all this and it will still work. So that's the great advantage of, um, of MIDI remote scripts. And that's why that is my preferred method. Um, the only downside to the Ableton system is that it doesn't uh, maybe provide you with all the control that you want. There is more. Um, that you cannot control with those user remote scripts, but then for the other stuff, you really have to go into the into the heavy remote script world. So I would 
recommend if you're starting out, check out the user remote scripts. And if you want more um, information on the other side of it, I'm also just researching that myself and I'm still learning in that world. But if you want to know about that, um, let me know and I'll try to share what I know about it. And um, that's it. Yeah. So I, I hope this was not too boring for you. I just wanted to show you some of the different options. Um, again, if you have any questions, let me know and um, I'll see you next week, hopefully.